Time is the inexplicable raw material of everything. With it, all is possible. Without it, nothing. The supply of time is truly a daily miracle, an affair genuinely astonishing when one examines it. You wake up in the morning and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours of the unmanufactured tissue of the universe of your life. It is yours. It is the most precious of possessions. No one can take it from you. It is unstealable. And no one receives either more or less than you receive. In the realm of time, there is no aristocracy of wealth and no aristocracy of intellect. Genius is never rewarded by even an extra hour a day. And there is no punishment. Waste your infinitely previous commodity as much as you will, and the supply will never be withheld from you. Moreover, you cannot draw on the future. Impossible to get into debt, you can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow. It is kept for you. You cannot waste the next hour. It is kept for you. You have to live on this 24 hours of daily time. Out of it, you have to spend health, pleasure, money, content, respect, and the evolution of your immortal soul. Its right use, its most effective use, is a matter of the highest urgency and of the most thrilling actuality. All depends on that. Your happiness, the elusive prize that you are all clutching for, my friends, depends on that. We shall never have any more time. We have, and we have always had, all the time there is. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency, and their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences, their intensity, their frequency. When my friend Mark died at age 44, someone says, that's young to die. But what if he lived four lifetimes in one? It might not be too young. So here's what it, whatever the span of your life turns out to be, here's what you want to fill it up with, experiences and the intensity of those experiences. Learn to study what we call majors and minors. You pick up the phone. Here's what you must say when you pick up the phone. Is this a major conversation or a minor conversation? If it's minor, a few pleasantries and you're done. If it's major, maybe you've got to make a few notes. So here's the next one. Important conversations make an agenda before you make the call. So what's major, what's minor? Now here's the key on this. Don't major in minor things. If you take up major time to do minor things, I'm telling you, you'll be behind the curve constantly. Here's what we learn in sales training. What's major time and what's minor time? Here's minor time, thinking about prospects. Here's minor time, making lists of prospects. Here's minor time, keeping books on prospects. Here's minor time, going to see the prospect. Here's minor time, evaluating the prospect after you've been there. That's all minor time. Here's major time, in the presence of the prospect. That's, min that's major time. And if you took a look, if you're in sales and you took a look at a week, you'd say, my gosh, I'm spending 90% of my time on the minor stuff and so little time on the major stuff in the presence of. How many hours in the presence of in my day? How many hours in the presence of during my sales week? Because the time that really counts is in the presence of. Majors and minors. Little phrase I have says, don't mistake movement for achievement. It's not that difficult to get busy. What you have to do is check to see what you're busy on. Because it's easy to haul out the trash and fix the screen door, get the car washed, and take the kids to school. I mean, it's easy to stay busy, right? The key is on what? When you work, work. When you play, play. Don't mix the two. Don't work at play. 
I used to take my family to the beach and I would bring my briefcase. I learned not to do that. Or at the beach, I'm saying I should be at the office. I should be at the office. Now my family's upset because I'm at the beach and I'm thinking office, office, office. Now when I'm at the office, I'm thinking what? I got to get my family to the beach, the beach, the beach. So things are not going too well at the office because I'm thinking beach and things are not going too well at the beach because I'm thinking office. Here's what I learned to do. At the beach, be at the beach. At the office, be at the office. When you work, work. When you play, play. Don't mix the two. Don't work at play. Now here's one of the most important ones. Don't play at work. Work is too serious. You don't want the reputation of being the office joker. It's not a good one. Yes, there's time for some pleasant stories. Yes, there's time for a little humor. Yes, uh, best if it's a happy office, of course. But I'm telling you, you got to be serious about work because you're parting with a piece of your life for the work you do. Your work costs you a piece of your life. Here's what it's called. Serious business, not grim, not unhappy, but serious. You got to treat work with all due conservative passion. Because it's leading you to your future. Next time management essential is concentration. Zeroing in. Preoccupation is fatal. Both on the freeway and in business. You've got to keep your mind concentrated. I have a little rule that says don't start the business day till you get to the office. I used to start my business day in the shower or at the breakfast table, and it just messed up a lot of things. I'm sitting at the breakfast table. Guess where my mind is? At the office. I even got mixed up going to the beach and, you know, trying to, you know, do some relaxing time. But sure enough, when I'm in the office, I'm uh, thinking about the beach. And when I'm on the beach, I'm saying I should be at the office. Now, see, that's mixed up. We quoted that little quote from the Reader's Digest in the evening seminar, right? Wherever you are, be there. If you're at the breakfast table, be there. When you're having a conversation with somebody, be there. When you're on your way to work, be there. Enjoy the ride. Take a look around you. What's going on? Study human nature. What's happening? You know, be there. And then when you get to the office, you know, go for it. Next time management essential is learn to say no. Boy, it's easy to overload your calendar, get yourself into all kinds of time management problems simply because you didn't have the, the strength to say no when you should have said no. It's much more difficult. have to back out. Ron Reynolds has a good phrase that says, don't let your mouth overload your back. That's good. Next, the time you've already committed to labor is enough time. If you're working already eight, ten hours a day, that's about it. You just can't work much more than that. Uh, bursts at a time, you can work 12, 14, 16, right? And I'm sure we've all learned to do that, put in the extra time. But after a while, you pretty well have to put your life in balance or your health is in jeopardy and your heart's in jeopardy, your blood pressure's in jeopardy, a lot of things uh, if you don't stay in balance. So you don't have to put in any more hours, probably. All you have to do is just make better use of the hours. A cliche we've all heard. It's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours that counts. Just be more alert to the things that might be stealing your time. Here's why, time is like capital. You can't let someone steal your seed corn, you can't let someone steal your capital, and you can't let someone steal your time. You must designate your time, and some of the time that you designate, you must not let anyone steal. Casual time, you might let someone intrude and steal a little bit and take a little bit, but not serious time.